Hi, this is Steph with Belladonna Dyes, and today's projects are going to be a kaleidoscope and a twofer. For this project, I start by centering it using the sleeve inside the other sleeve technique. So I'm using a washable marker to mark out my center points. Then I'm going to tuck one sleeve inside the other sleeve, line up all the seams along the underarm and along the shoulder, and if it has side seams, I line those up too. What this does, it's going to create symmetry in your project. So when you open it up, it will have a mirror image from left to right, and then your saturation usually will be all the same on the front and then all the same on the back. And most of the projects that I make, unless it's a spiral, are done this way. If you're brand new to tie-dyeing, this first step of centering the shirt can seem rather difficult. It just takes a little bit of practice. After you do a few of them, it gets easier and you understand what you're doing, you know, just with anything, the more you do it, the easier it becomes. This is the foundation for your tie-dye. So you do wanna make sure that you get everything lined up the best that you can. Like I said, when you open it up, it'll have a mirror image and everything lines up perfectly. Your project is gonna look a lot better if you take your time. So don't rush through it, just do the best you can. That looks pretty good. So the next step is to decide where do you want the center of your pattern to be. And I like to come down just about an inch or two below the underarm. You don't wanna to go too far down on the center of the shirt because then it ends up being on the belly button and I don't think that looks very good. I slide my yardstick up underneath the t-shirt roll it up on its side, and then I use that to help me create a nice straight edge. So I just pick it right up off the table, flop it back down on the table, and then line everything back up again. This kaleidoscope is pretty easy to make. So I'm going to use my yardstick again to create a nice straight edge, and I'm just going to airplane fold from the top right down to the bottom left. If your sleeves are on the other side, just do the opposite. I twist the project in front of me and I'm going to pleat from that center point up to the top of the shirt. And I'm making these pleats roughly about an inch tall. Once I get it all pleated up, I'm going to secure it by using rubber bands. I prefer to use rubber bands for most projects. You could use kite string, you could probably even use sinew if you wanted to, but I don't wanna create any white lines or anything like that, so I'm just going with the rubber bands. And you wanna choose rubber bands that will make the project nice and tight, but they're not so overly tight that it makes it wanna to start to buckle and do weird things. I want to give a big shout out to the newest channel members, Gemstone6 and Sharon Marshall. Thank you very much for your membership. I greatly appreciate it. All of your proceeds will go back into the channel. That way I'm able to continue to bring out content. And for those of you that are already channel members and continue to be channel members, thank you very, very much. Your generosity does not go unnoticed. And for all of you that have subscribed to the channel, tune in on a regular basis, you leave a thumbs up, you leave comments, all of that helps the channel grow. It gets the content out there for new tie dyers and especially we're coming up on the warmer weather, a lot of new tie dyers will start tie dyeing. And so we wanna get that content out there because it's a really great resource. You guys remember when you were new to tie dyeing, you didn't really know what to do, right? Having these videos, I feel, is such a great resource. I want to share my art, and I want to just make the world a more colorful place, one rainbow at a time. So thank you to everybody. I really do appreciate you.
Now I'm going to use a washable marker to mark out my pattern. And I know that it's so glary, it's really terrible. I have since gotten rid of this black table. I wanted to use a black table so that my channel would stand out, but it really makes things hard to see. So I do apologize for that, but I'm just basically making like, like an upside down V. Now it's time for the fun part and my favorite part. We get to add the die. And this white table, it makes things so much easier to see. So sorry about all that black table. That one is no more. Although there probably are a few more projects that I still need to upload and uh, share with you guys. So just bear with me on that. Now everywhere where I've drawn on the green, I'm going to be putting the imperial purple and then the other stripes I'm gonna just make in different colors. For the setup, I'm using a foil pan that I got from, well, it's $1.25 now, and this is a single tray. There is a two pack, I believe they have a two pack, but they're a little more flimsy, and those leak right away. I can use this particular heavy duty one a couple of times before it starts to leak, but it doesn't matter. You must put your entire project down inside of something that's going to catch the melting ice water. Nothing worse than coming out and finding your muck water has leaked through the foil pan and has gotten everywhere. It's, it's really a tragic mess. As far as the rack goes and the silicone cake molds, I got them from Amazon and I do have links down below in the description box for these and everything else that I use for tie-dye, so I recommend that you check it out. And to secure the cake molds to the um, to the rack, I'm just using clothespins, and I picked those up in the laundry area at Fred Meyer. All of the colors that I'm using for this project came from Dharma Trading Company. Mulberry and Tropical Dream are special order dyes from Dharma, and you have to order five pounds or more in order to get them, and that's way too much dye. I cannot order that much, I would never get through it. But you can find small quantities over on Facebook. Tie Dye Supplies Marketplace and I order my dyes from Kathy Greger. She is fully stocked and ready to go and super easy to work with. There is a link down below in the description box that will take you right over to the marketplace and you find Kathy and she can hook you up. Now when you're over there though, make sure you click the follow button or the like button because if there's any new dye colors that become available or announcements, you won't miss out on anything. Snozberry is also a Dharma color, but it's one of those colors they call them muck dyes, and they only make a limited amount, and when they're gone, they're gone forever. I don't know why they do that, but it's kind of like a seasonal type thing. So you might be able to find somebody that has Snozberry over in the marketplace. Now that I have my basic dye pattern down, I'm just gonna go over and clean up all of my lines and make sure that I have everything just the way I want it.
Next, I give the project a quick little sprinkle of soda ash for good measure, and I set the project aside. And then I work on my freebie, my two for one, my two for. I cannot find the footage of me scrunching this shirt, but all I did was take a t-shirt, did a really super tight scrunch on it, and secured it with rubber bands. I do have other videos on scrunches. Um, you can go check those out. Sorry about that, you guys. I put a thin little layer of my nugget ice down in the bottom of this foil pan. I was almost out of the tropical dream, so I'm just sprinkling it right out of the jar. And then I'm gonna mash the uh, scrunch right down into it. Now I'm trying this globber salt out. Supposedly globber salt is going to help the, the fabric take in the dye, especially with hard colors like turquoise that don't wanna bond. I'm not really sure if I'm noticing a difference. Um, I'll have to do like a side-by-side -side experiment. I place it down underneath the main shirt, which is the kaleidoscope, and I'm going to add my eyes to that project. And what I want it to do is I want it to drip on through and down on top of the twofer, the scrunch. Now it's recommended that you let your project batch at 70 degrees or higher for at least 24 hours after the ice melts and I let these projects batch for the full 48 hours. Now it's time for the rinse out and the wash out process. So I follow Dharma Trading Company's instructions. So what I do is I start by using cold water. Cold water is going to remove any soda ash that might still be reacting within the fabric. And then I increase my water up too hot and I rinse until the water runs pretty much clear. So the cold water removes that soda ash and then the hot water removes any unbonded dye. That way both of them will go down the drain instead of into the washing machine. Now you can do this outside in your grass, on your patio, wherever you prefer to do your rinse out. I just happen to do it in my sink. And all of that dye goes right on down the sink. You can do it in your yard, you guys. It is not toxic. It, at least to my knowledge, it's not. I take it outside and pour out my muck water in the grass and I don't notice any issue. And in the summertime when it's hot, I will water my hydrangeas, no problem, okay? But I don't want any of that soda ash and the unbonded dye in my washing machine because I wash six to eight to 10 shirts at a time. And if you got a bunch of um, soda ash and unbonded dye in there, you run the risk of potentially having you know dark colors redeposit onto your lights, okay? So once I get it rinsed out in the sink really well, I take it to the washing machine. And once at the washing machine, I like to do hot water cycles using Kirilon. And Kirilon is a professional textile detergent. And I usually do two hot water cycles using Kirilon, but you do it however you want to do it. And then I like to do a final hot water cycle using Milsoft. And Milsoft is a professional fabric softener. And you will find the links for both of those down below in the description box. Then I will put the project in the dryer and I'll iron it and we'll come back and we'll see the results. Well, here it is guys. Here's our first shirt, the Kaleidoscope, after it's been washed and dried and ironed. And I think it turned out super pretty. I love this shirt. Now, the Tropical Dream kind of got swallowed up by the Imperial Purple and the Mulberry, but I'm okay with it. Like you can see little hints of the green. Um, Tropical Dream is more of like a turquoise green type color. And you know, there's not a whole heck of a lot on this. The Imperial Purple is the dark purple and it splits down into the navy blue. And it's one of those colors where you really get a lot of bang for your buck because you get two colors out of one. You get the 
really deep, rich purple, and then the beautiful navy blue. And then Mulberry is the magenta color on this, and it's one of my favorite special order colors. It's just, it's just so pretty. I mean, I really do love everything about this shirt. I didn't quite like it at first because of that roundness in the center, but after I ironed it, photographed it, looked at it in photographs, I really fell in love with it. Now here is the freebie, the twofer, and it's also gorgeous. I'm seeing a lot more of the tropical dream on this one, but obviously I put a lot more tropical dream down on it. I, I don't see a lot of purple. I see more of the navy blue. Well, I guess it is purple, but it's like a navy blue purple. Um, really pretty. And then the, the magenta is the mulberry, but it's like extremely concentrated on this shirt. And I just love the way it kind of like flecks out on this. I don't know what this pattern is. It's kind of like a, like a crackle almost or something. I don't really know, but I'm also very happy with this twofer. And if you guys aren't making twofers yet, I definitely recommend it because not only is it just such a, a way to use up all the dye that's falling down into your trays, but it's also such a great space saver. Two projects at the same time, in the same conditions, I'm able to make more projects all at once and it just, it's more efficient and I'm obsessed with making the two furs. So I highly recommend it. And then this right here is the side by side. So the shirt on top and the shirt on the bottom. And I'm really happy with both of them. So what do you guys think of today's projects? Please leave me some comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel, leave a thumbs up and click the bell and set it to all. That way you get notified of future uploads. And remember, have fun tie dyeing.